Hello everyone and welcome back to my new fly career in Microsoft Flight Sim where I'm going to do my first flight with the Mitsubishi MU2. Well, my first flight in the career with the Mitsubishi MU2, but I've hardly flown it otherwise. Uh, so it's going to be interesting. I don't even know how the autopilot works right now. Or I haven't actually checked out a start up either. But first things first, I am going to uh, return my rented aircraft. So let's do that. The deposit was nearly 100,000. So 444,000. And if you recall, the loan that I took was 500,000. So if we could get up to 500,000, I could repay the loan before I have to give that 50,000 there, which would be a good idea. And we should be able to do that. Uh, I have this flight here to Th Thailand, VTUO, that's 752 nautical miles, that will pay 75,000, so that will cover it, though I probably want an extra flight just to be safe, of course, that's not a whole lot of margin. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's a fair flight, it's a, you know, a three hour flight, and the condition is that the flight time should not exceed four hours and 32 minutes. So, got to keep that in mind. It's vegetables. 1,809 pounds of vegetables. So, all right. But it says not enough remaining cargo capacity. Now, why would that be? Well, no cargo in this craft. Yeah, we've got 3,009. That's my plane. Um, this is my plane. Uh, maybe it wasn't clear on which plane I was using. So, okay, now now it's okay with this one. Okay. Uh, all right. No caveats, right? Okay. So we've got that. I'm starting on the ramp. We'll see how to start it up. It seems to think I need more fuel than what I've got in right now, which is probably halfway. I don't think I need that much, but... Maybe I should trust it. Uh, the cargo capacity was 1,800. We need 1,809, we'll say, in the baggage. So it's like that. So we should be able to take about 75% or more of the fuel. And maybe that'll be okay. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Transporter. Loading has started. Stand by. Sounds like heavy boxes of vegetables to me. They better be premium vegetables. Okay, well, let us try to use the checklist. That didn't help me a whole lot with the ATR-42, but okay, well, this is beforehand. Presumably everything is off. And yes, all that should be okay. Battery on is what I like to see first. So, it's the key that turns the battery on. That's fair enough. Actually, before we do anything else, let's make sure Neofly is happy with our state. So, I'll reduce this a little bit. because I'm putting some vegetables in the co-pilot seat. And fuel, I loaded 1,884. So, so that should be all fine. Okay. Prop lever to taxi. I guess. Um, let me just use my actual prop lever. How about that? Okay, prop lever to taxi. Throttle lever to start. There. Gearing switch to ground. I guess for both. Well, it says left only. Okay. I guess we just crank the engine. So really it just needs the battery. Press crank switch. Uh, run. And starter switch. Is that one. Is it doing stuff? It's not doing anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I would expect to at least have some fuel flow thing. Oh, 
Maybe it's doing something. Oh, it is doing something. Okay. This takes a little bit. Monitor oil pressure greater than 40 PSI and then engage the main fuel tank, it says. So, where is the oil pressure? Okay, well, it's greater than 40 PSI. Engage that tank. Okay, now we've got exhaust temperature and fuel flow and the RPM is getting into the yellow range. Okay, so that's how it is. We are monitoring the fuel flow. Yes, we are. So center pedestal, same thing for the right, I would suppose. So pop rotation check. Yeah, we got that. LH generator. Where is that? Okay, the generators are here. Okay, we've got amps, inverter, on. Okay, so, trying to get the flow of it from this seat. Prop lever, yes. Throttle lever, yes. Gearing, switch to ground. Ground. Enrichment, press. And crank switch, run. And then start. And then if we look at the PSIs or the oil. And once it's greater than 40, or let's say in the yellowish range almost, uh, turn that on. Everything looks good from where I'm sitting. Taxi to the and runway and take off. My dispatch reads that we're okay. This the outer tank, the main tank is here, and then we've got the tip tank. Let me just do the tip tank first if we can. I don't know how it prioritizes things. Okay, and then the right hand generator, that's fine. The exhaust gas temp is creeping up there. Green, green, okay, okay. Greenish on the oil temp. Okay, and then the crank switch is on run. Gearing switches are back on safe automatically. Beacon lights is already on. Or uh, beacon taxi. Beacon taxi. Oh, but then it takes... Uh, because I had to switch it from the beacon beacon to beacon taxi. I should just put it on beacon taxi initially. Flaps 20 degrees. That's actually two notches down. Trim needs to be two degrees nose up. Well, that's definitely not where it starts out. Rotate speed says 115 knots. Of course, that's dependent on our mass, but we'll get to that. Okay, person in front of me. Oh, the wheel is locked like that now. No. Okay. I can't get the wheel turning right. How do I reset the wheel? That's fine. It's not working. Uh, well, I'm going to have to restart again. Okay, restarting. Okay, oil pressure is up. It's running. Give it fuel. Sounds good. Turn on the generator. Inverter. Inverter turns on the avionics. Okay, other engine. I mean, cranking, and then start. And it's got fuel. Everything looks good from where I'm sitting. Taxi to the runway and take off. Well, I'm gonna be careful with the nose gear. Okay, GPS has acquired. Let's get the generator on for the right hand. 
autopilot is just um it's pretty rudimentary all right well altitude's there too well i guess if i just do control one it goes down there and then goes back here okay and i'm picking 29 Okay, I have to not use all my steering. I do need the flaps, and I probably should check the trim. Okay, before I actually get into the runway one runway area, let me trim. Okay, here we go. Chasing that little van. At least there's no gust lock on this one. Well, I don't know what you're doing here, buddy. Come on, plane. You can do it. You're supposed to operate on smaller airfields than this. Okay, we are off barely. Transporter, have a nice flight. On to Thailand. Exhaust temp is pretty high right now. Let's cut back, cut back, cut back. Okay, well, let's see how this does. Okay, heading, yes. Good. That's where my view isn't perfectly centered, because you can see sort of the right top, uh, sorry, the top little dash on the attitude indicator isn't lined up with the level right there. So I'm a little bit off to the right. Well anyway, there it is, my proud new plane. Nice executive black livery. Heading out from Hong Kong. Well, the service ceiling is supposed to be around 29,000 feet. And the range on Wikipedia is given at 25,000 feet. Range is only 1,260 nautical miles at that altitude, with full wing and tip tanks, though including 30 minutes of reserve, of course. So... Well, we'll see. Well, I think I should probably trim down a little bit. We're going a bit slow here. I wonder if the Apollo is sort of in charge of that right now, maybe. Yeah, it is. My trim wasn't working. Once I turned the autopilot on, it already uses that vertical speed indicator. Vert vertical speed selector. Well, there's that long bridge, except from much higher up. That's... that's pretty darn long. And Macau. Estimated time on route is getting down to three hours there. Round speed 238 knots and I haven't even leveled out. So I'm pretty satisfied with my fuel flow here. I loaded up with uh, 1,800 pounds and we're down to each engine taking less than 250 pounds per hour. So that's definitely more than more than three hours worth. So I'll level out at 18,000, I think. All right, looks stable. We are cruising. I throttled up a little bit to get the fuel flow to basically 500 pounds per hour combined. Uh, we're not accelerating that much right now, so this is probably the speed we're going at. 265 knots ground speed. Maybe I can give it a little bit more if I in a hurry um, I'd like to go two hours and 30 minutes if we could I don't think I'm getting that okay fine backing off from that theory I'll just uh, let it be so there we are it's gonna be a long flight for the first flight with this plane and I don't know how the landing is gonna be 6,858 foot runway, so that's no problem. Bangkok is further along, so after we land at this location, 
Bangkok's further along our way to Singapore, basically. All right, status check. I've been flying along the north end of Hainan Island, basically in that strait there. As you can see, so Haiku. Uh, I think one of the Chinese launch sites is at Wenchang uh, on Hainan Island down uh, right there, Wenchang. But we're not flying over that. I'm going through in the middle here. Headed towards Vietnam. Other than that, everything else seems to be okay. One hour and 46 minutes left according to the GPS. 481 nautical miles remaining. And I certainly have enough fuel. No problems. Speed is not very much changed. 272 knots ground speed. My altitude has changed according to sky for sim though, not uh, internally here, so I guess the pressure has changed. I'll, uh, I'll just tune it. Uh, though, it doesn't seem likely that the pressure is that high, is it? That's where the sky for sim altitude sometimes doesn't seem right. I think I'll just hold off on that for now. Okay, we are approaching Vietnam and I'm basically crossing at the thinnest point here. So this is going to be the quickest crossing of Vietnam. Well, if you completely cross it, basically. It is a very thin country except for at the ends. So, yeah. Same with Laos. Actually, a little bit of a bigger portion of Laos. But there it is, the coast of Vietnam. Nothing much has changed with our speed. We've got 57 minutes to go. Fuel still seems fine. The tip tanks are done. We're just on the main tanks. Well, Unfortunately, the textures are just ugh. They are generic, obviously not anything good, patchy. They've got clouds even though they're generic. Um, and there's light spots. It's just, it's horrible. Look at this bit. It's sad, really. Well, I'm enthusiastic about Flight Sim 2024, but I'd be remarkably impressed if uh, Asobo did something about that. Um, there are definitely certain areas of the world that they just aren't interested in. But what's up with that patch, really? No, I didn't lose connection. <laughs> um, let's just make sure. Yeah, still online. All right, we are over central Laos and actually the train looks a little bit better here than over Vietnam. The clouds are in the way though, so maybe they're hiding some of the some of the iffier bits. Hopefully Thailand will be all right. About 40 minutes left in the flight. Okay, well I'm over Thailand, but somebody outside is playing with fireworks, unfortunately. So if you hear some crackling noises when I'm talking, that'll be fireworks. It is June 30th. They're early. Not looking too bad around here. Clearly they like Thailand better. 105 nautical miles away, 23 minutes. Yep, much better quality around here, though obviously not up to detail level of some other areas. I'll begin a mild descent. Well, I haven't ever flown into this particular part of Thailand, as far as I can recall. I mean in a simulator, obviously. In real life, definitely not. Okay, Buri Rum. Rum. Buri Rum is our target here. Yep, 
Hey, runway 22 was what I was hoping for. Well, somehow I've got this cloud right in front of me. We're not close yet. We're still 19 nautical miles away. I think that'll do for autopilot. Autopilot disengaged. I think I sort of see the airport there. A little bit of flap. Haven't gotten final clearance yet. Clear to land runway two two Ray Eyes Romeo Alpha four one two. Wow! This, uh, it suddenly decelerate. Uh, if I throw it down, it really decelerates quickly. Okay. I've probably landed this before, but it's been a bit. Hey, it says 162 feet per minute. Contact ground for well, what is it going to say at the end? Still says 162. Well, I mean, you know, for the first time with it, I'm reasonably pleased. Is there anything around here? I've got to remember not to turn the thing. Oh, well, now it says 195. What is with its revising my descent rate? I've got to remember not to turn too quickly with the nose wheel. Okay, well, there seems to be some taxi ribbon over there. There's the taxi prop. Well, we're definitely on time. Now, what kind of turn do you want me to make? Look, this thing, its wheel locks if I... Where are you parking me? wheel locks if I turn too quickly. Gosh, slumming it over here. Stand by, pilot. Cargo unloading. Okay, well, inverter and generator up. Uh, that's two hours and 54 minutes, it says. Transporter from dispatch. The cargo was picked up by the customer. Your mission is completed. Okay, well, turning off the key. Okay, so that's that. We got our money, and I could replay, repay the loan now. Uh, but, uh, you know, no hurry. I'll just uh, wait one more flight with that. Hopefully we can get something to Bangkok, but I'm not sure. Well, there's a plus there. Okay, it looks like... At that airport near Bangkok, there's stuff. It's the international airport. Um, it's only 173 nautical miles. But VTBD is what we're, we'd be looking for. It's not too bad. I mean, that's like a little bit less than an hour. But I don't think I'll handle it this time. I have a long, have had a long flight, a long flight than I normally do. And so personally, I'm going to call it quits here.